Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tastitudes.com. In this tutorial I will be demonstrating the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop, how it works and later discuss why we would use this tool. For this tutorial I'm going to use this image of a small bonsai tree. This image is quite intricate and complex. There is lots of negative space in and around the branches and leaves so I'm hoping this will make for a good example to demonstrate how this tool works. So here we are in Photoshop and we currently have what appears to be a bonsai tree on top of a white background. If we take a look in our layers panel we can see we have one extra layer below, a blue gradient. And we can see that this layer is currently set to invisible as the eye icon on the far left has been disabled. If I toggle the visibility of the white base layer on the bottom, we can now see that all the space in and around the tree is now transparent. And we know this because we can see in our layers panel that there is no layer visible below. And we can see the white and grey box pattern in the background, which in Photoshop represents transparency. If we look in our layers panel, on the tree layer there is no mask applied. So this must mean that this tree has been cut out previously. Now let's reveal the white layer and this time also reveal the blue gradient layer to see how our tree looks. And we can see that we have a nice cutout. Let's zoom in a little and take a look around. And we can see that this cutout is looking quite clean. So how would we cut out such an intricate image like this in Adobe Photoshop? Well let's find out. So here is the original image I started from. If we look in the layers panel, we can see that this time it's a flat image and it's on a single layer. If I come over to my next document, I have a separate file with a blue gradient. If I copy and paste this gradient into my tree composition, we now have two layers. Upon pasting in Photoshop, it has automatically created a new layer above the previous. Now I'm going to drag this layer under my tree layer. So now we have two layers, our tree layer on top and our gradient layer at the bottom. So now we need to cut this tree out so we can see the gradient layer below, just like in our initial example. So how are we going to do this? Well, in Photoshop, there are a few ways we can try. We could start simply with the normal eraser tool, choose a good sized brush and start to remove parts of the layer we don't want. We could toggle the brush size and go in a little bit closer and start to remove some areas around our tree. But as you can see, this is going to take a long time. We could try using the magic wand tool to select the white area around, so let's try this. But what you will find is this only selects the outside area. The tree image in the pot has a shadow, so you can see it also draws a selection around the shadow area as well. We could press shift on the keyboard, and as you can see, a plus symbol appears next to the magic wand cursor. This is Photoshop asking us to select more areas to add to the selection. So we could continue to select areas and add to the overall selection, but this could take a long time, and it's not that efficient. But let's say you are patient and you persist with this technique. Once you are happy with the selection, if we press delete, we can now see our background. Well, at first glance, it appears to have done the job. But if we zoom in and have a little look around, we can see that there appears to be this white outline around the tree. Well, this is not looking too good and we don't really want that. So is there another alternative? Well, yes, there is we can use the background eraser tool. So what is this background eraser tool? Well, this is a tool in Photoshop that can intelligently remove part of a background. The background eraser tool will select a color from the background and remove that color from the brush area. So in other words, you can remove, delete part of an image you don't want, but at the same time, keep part of an image you do want. And it's the perfect tool for this scenario, because we want to remove the white background from our flat tree layer. This will add transparency to the layer and reveal the gradient layer below. So let's have a look at how this works. To activate the background eraser tool, we come to the menu 
and click and hold on the normal eraser tool. Then you will see three icons appear. You want to select the icon in the middle, the icon that appears to have a scissors on it. Now you have the background eraser tool active, let's move on to our composition. And what you will notice different about this tool compared to the normal eraser tool is that you have this crosshair in the middle of the brush area. This is Photoshop asking you what colour you are looking to select to remove from the brush area when you click. Now before we start to use this tool, there are some important things you need to keep in mind. And that is the tolerance and the limits. Now what are these? Well, come up to the top of your screen. When you have the background eraser tool active, you will have this tolerance bar and the limits menu. Let's start with the limit and we are going to start by setting this to contiguous. I'll explain why shortly and let's set our tolerance to 20%. Okay, so let's come back to our composition. Let's make sure we have our tree layer selected and we will toggle our brush size to get a fairly decent sized brush. And let's make a start. So I'm going to start on this area here with the leaves in this leaves area. And I'm going to start to click. Okay, so I have clicked three times. And what do we see? Well, we have effectively removed part of the white background and kept the tree image intact. But we can still see we have some of the white background that appears to be creating a white outline around the tree. Right, so. To rectify this, we need to change our tolerance. So I'm going to do this. So I'll quickly undo what I just did. And now I'm going to come back up to the top of my screen and come up to my tolerance. And this time I'm going to change the tolerance to about 50%. So let's come back again and start to click. Now this time it looks a lot better. It has made a much better job of that. But what if I come back up to my tolerance, let's quickly undo this, and I'm going to change my tolerance to say 90%. And let's come back and click on the image again. Well, then you will see we start to encroach into the image. So what have we learned here? So using the background eraser tool, you have to pay close attention to the tolerance to find a nice balance. So let's continue to use this tool and remove the background. And I'm going to quickly change this to about 50% because it looked quite good before. So I'm just going to quickly continue to remove part of the image. So we're going to make a start here and start to remove part of the background. So let's go ahead and do this. Zoom in a little. And we're just clicking around and selecting areas to delete. It's looking okay right now, but what you might find is using the background eraser tool, you might get some pixels here that it hasn't picked up. Now that could be down to the percentage of tolerance. What you can do is just put your mouse on the pixels, the crosshair, and just click again, and you can start to remove these. If you just go into a little bit more depth. So I'm going to carry on, but this time I'm going to come into this bit of negative space here. You can see that's looking just fine. Let's come in here. That looks okay. And just carry on clicking around here. So now you can see we're beginning to make a bit of progress. Uh, let's have a look at this. We've cut out quite a few areas from within the trees and leaves here. But I just quickly want to draw your attention to a scenario like this. Now, the background eraser tool works really well when you have high contrast images. For example, here we've got a nice clear definition of the, the tree here and the white background. So that's gonna make it really easy to, to use the background eraser tool. But sometimes you might have an area like this, for example, where we have the bark background, which is white, but you can see that we have the white sort of light highlights on the china bowl here. So let's pull back our background eraser tool. And for example, if we click here, you can see that it's cutting into the china bowl and also cutting into the image there too. So let's just quickly undo that. Now we can try and improve this by bringing our tolerance down. 
So if we bring our tolerance down to say around about 20 and let's click there, you can see it's done a much better job there. But if we click just down below, you can see it's also done a nice job here. Um, but it's kind of eating into the China bowl. Let's undo that. And you can we can see this because there is white areas on the bowl. So in some circumstances, using the background eraser tool might not be a good idea. To tackle this, we might have to come back and choose our eraser tool and just remove this part ourselves. Now, a good tip when using the normal eraser tool in this scenario is that we can use the shift use the shift button on the mouse so for example if I press and hold shift and I click once on an area if I just click on another area the shift will sort of snap that together so it's almost like drawing a straight line so I can use the normal eraser tool just to draw an outline around my object like this, like so. So I'm just going to come over and use it again. So I'm holding shift and I'm just going to click and click again using the eraser tool just around the, the outline of my china bowl like so. After going around the outline of my bowl quickly, I have got a nice cut out there. So let's come back to our image and back to our background eraser tool. So I'm going to come back to my menu and click and hold and select my background eraser tool. Now, earlier on when we started, I showed you, uh, well, I said to use the limit set to contiguous. Now, if I come back to my image and just expand my brush size, so now we have the crosshair in this little negative space here. If I press and click, you will see it has not only removed part of the background from within these leaves here, but also on the outside. If I press undo and change my limit to find edge and click again, you will notice that it'll only keep it within that section. So it's a small detail, but I just thought I would add that. But I'm going to change it to contiguous because I am happy for it to select or delete parts of the background in and around these areas. So I'm just going to carry on and progress with my image and keep removing parts of the background. So now I can come around the outside of my tree and work around the leaves like so. Let's talk about my brush size. Let's come back. It's looking quite nice. Seems to be doing a nice job of that. So we're making progress. So now I'm going to zoom in and try and tackle these areas here. So let's bring back my background eraser tool. And I'm going to start a tolerance of 40%. And let's see how this works. So let's click around, and that's looking okay. That seems to be taking care of that quite nicely. Let's click inside here. Hmm, zoom in. And we can see we've still got a bit of outline there. So I'm just going to undo that, and let's try and toggle our tolerance slightly. So let's bring our tolerance down. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, actually, not so much. Let's push our tolerance up. So it was 50% before. 40% uh, before, let's try around 50%. And there you go, that's looking quite nice. So I'm just going to work around these little areas like so. Whoops, you can see what can happen. I'm just going to do, do, undo that and work around like so. And just click in these areas. It seems to be doing a fairly decent job. Let's click in there, it's looking okay. Good, I do. It's quite good. And let's finish off our bowl here. We're going to need to change the tolerance here. Change this down a bit. And do maybe go with around thirty percent or. 
and 30, 30%. It's looking okay. And you can see that the 30% around this area isn't looking too hot. So I'm just going to undo that. Change this to about 50%. That's much better. So then soon you will have quickly deleted all the areas from within the tree area. And we will have this white area on the outside, which we can simply select by pressing W to select the magic wand and we can just select these areas like so and just press delete. Um, you might still have some areas down here but that's just a, a simple matter of selecting extra with the magic wand and press delete and maybe just get rid of some more areas and just like that we have erased all the white background. So that's how you can use the background eraser tool in Adobe Photoshop. Now I must stress that some professionals would argue and say you must never use the eraser tool. You should never really delete any part of the layer. It is seen as bad practice in Photoshop. And you should always use masks. If you're not sure what masking a layer is, then you can see a more in-depth tutorial I have done previously. There is a link in the description. Now, in more situations, I would agree, and 90% of the time, I do myself use masks. But sometimes, you encounter a scenario like this, where you might have a bunch of flowers or even hair. Take this image, for example. This time, we have an intricate image, again, set on a white background. The background eraser tool would be good in this instance as well, if we make sure we have a nice balance with our tolerance we can get a good effect and maintain the detail of some of the finer hair strands. Photoshop offers you a wide variety of ways to do things and more often than not it's about choosing the right tool for the job or the situation. This is one technique at your disposal whether you choose to use it or not. The background eraser tool has worked really well for me and I hope it works just as well for you. Well I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial brought to you by tastytutes.com have fun guys, and I'll see you next time.